What's up everyone and welcome back to another video. So as you guys probably know, Chapter 4 has a very unique map. At the moment, there are only a handful of major POIs and finding a drop spot is definitely a bit of a challenge at the moment. But you know your boy Teko's got you covered and that's why in today's video I'll be going over the best solo drop spots in Fortnite Chapter 4 Season 1. These drop spots should help you whether you're playing arena, tournaments, or even just regular matches and should help you to consistently place higher and win more games. Before we get into these drop spots though, be sure to drop a like if you find this video helpful and consider subscribing as well if you're new to the channel and you want to see more tips and tricks content just like this in the future if you want to show some extra support as well it would really be appreciated if you could use code teco in the item shop it only takes a few seconds to type in it's completely free for you and it seriously does help me out a bunch thank you so much to everyone who's using it you guys are awesome but with that said and without further ado let's get into today's video so hopping into our first spot for today's video and we're going to be talking about a tiny place called shore shack shore shack is a tiny house on the edge of the map that happens to be surrounded by some serious loot you'll want to start off by landing at the blue house which which is the main sort of drop here go ahead and loot all that up and then head southwest to the hill where you're going to find up to three more chest spawns you do have the option to go south from here but i really only see that being the best move when the zone is on top of you and you have time to loot but generally i recommend just heading northwest up the coast where you're going to find another stone area with up to three chests then head up the coast again and you're going to find this little shed with a chest inside and one out on the dock now from here guys you have a few options you should have solid loot by now so you can choose whether to head back to the house and grab a car you can also go third party shattered slabs or you can just continue looting around the area if you're looking to play a bit more passive but overall this drop spot and loot route nets you 13 chests a pretty good amount of coolers and the option to fish as well for even more loot so overall this is a fantastic solo drop and i'd recommend you give it a shot it's relatively rare that people land here or try to contest it and it does provide some really solid consistent loot as well as pretty good materials at least in terms of wooden bricks so i would strongly recommend it moving on to our second spot for this video though and we've got a super stack drop that is actually pretty quiet this spot is called coastal battlement and while it's not a super op spot on its own the small areas around it make it a super solid option as a drop spot start by landing off of the little castle where you should find two chests and one of the oathbound chests keep in mind the oathbound chests are 70 percent spawn rate so you won't always get them but those are the big chests that you get extra loot from and they're super op after that continue down this coast where you're going to find another chest under the stairs you'll find another one along the slabs and then go to the crane where you're going to find one on top of the rock and finally one above the rock formation down below on the coast from there simply head down to this little cabin and you're going to find another two chest and potentially another oathbound chest as well as some fishing rods if you need to get some extra heals. Then you can choose what to do next. You can head down south to get more loot. You can third party Breakwater Bay, or you can grab a boat out by the dock and head along the north coast if you're looking to be extra passive and secure more loot. Overall, this route is pretty dense, meaning it takes very little time to get through it. Yet it still has pretty good loot with eight chests as well as two oathbound chests. And that's even better because this place barely ever gets contested. Keep in mind the oathbound chests, they don't always spawn, but even if you get one, that should still be a very solid boost. Like I'd really equate one oathbound chest to pretty much like three or four regular chests they're really that good on to our third spot though and we've got one of the most powerful edge map spots which is crude harbor this is just one small location yet it has some of the most dense loot i've seen on this entire map it's one of the most northern locations so it's very out of the way as well it gets contested quite a bit more often than the last two spots but it's definitely worth it if you survive i recommend you start off by landing on a slurp truck breaking it and then running around to loot as you usually would my personal preference is the slurp truck on the east side of the main building since it's a very well covered spot and you can choose whether to loot the main building or head up north afterwards after getting your instant 200 hp you're gonna have up to 17 chests to loot throughout this entire location which is an absolute ton for a relatively small spot once you finish looting up and you're ready to go you can simply grab a car and get on your way although this spot is a bit more contested than the other two we've gone over so far it's still a fantastic option with an absolute ton of loot and guaranteed max hp so if you can handle the heat it's definitely worth a shot moving on to the fourth location for this video though and next up we've got a location that's actually relatively centered on the map which is pleasant passage so far the other three locations have all been edge map locations which is totally fine but some people prefer to not have to rotate far and obviously that's where this location comes in dropping in i recommend you start off at the little castle south of the houses it has two chests and it sometimes even spawns an oathbound chest which can give you a massive advantage if anyone's contesting you at the houses after that head down to the houses and loot those up and that's going to set you up with eight total chest spawns so far and of course you have the oathbound spawn from earlier if you're uncontested at this place then don't bother popping shield if you go southeast after looting up you're going to find a slap juice truck which can get you shield up finally after that truck head in the same direction for a bit longer and you're going to find this cabin with your final chest from here you can rotate to zone and get all set or you can find some pretty good loot in the surrounding area since the zone usually isn't too bad here overall this is a really solid spot which has relatively central position on the map as a bonus 
It has a total of 10 regular chests and an oathbound chest, so it's a pretty solid spot overall. Moving into our fifth spot, and we're back on the edge of the map with an insane loot spot, which is Exile Isle. Exile Isle is the small island you're going to find at the absolute bottom of the map, and you'd be really surprised by the loot you can secure from it. Start by landing at the building on the southeast side. Go ahead and loot that up, including the oathbound chest, and then you're going to find four chests around the coast. Then you'll find some more chests and a boat on the northwest side. Use the boat to go east to this tower, where you're going to find another chest as well as an oathbound chest. Then go back up northwest to the humble hamlet area. Here you're going to find seven chests and an oathbound chest at the houses, and then another chest down at the dock if you have time to get it. Overall, this loot route is absolutely insane with a total of 20 chests as well as three oathbound chests. This is definitely one of the most stacked spots we've had so far. And you've also got a boat with a massive river west of you, which you can use to head to the center of the map. So overall, this loot route is definitely a gem, and I'd even venture to say you could use it as a duo or a trio spot as well. But if you can secure it in solos, you're bound to be stacked. On to number 6 of this video though, and we've got a spot called Solitary Shrine. As the name implies, this spot is a little shrine in the middle of the snow biome that not only has some solid loot, but great rotations as well. Starting off, you're going to want to loot up as usual. You should find up to 9 chest pawns in the main building alone. From there, use the launch pad to get up north and into the cave, which is called Cold Cavern. You'll find up to 3 chests in the clock tower, and then you'll find one right outside once you break out. From there, head to the zip line, get up the mountain, and you may find one more chest by the campfire. From here, you have two options. Either head back to the shrine and launch pad to rotate away, or if you want to get even more loot, or if the zone is on you, you can also head east from here. And there you're going to find another similar shrine location called the Stone Tower. And at the Stone Tower, you're going to get another five chest spawns as well as another launch pad to rotate wherever you want to go. Overall, this is a really well-rounded spot with fantastic rotations as well as pretty good position on the map. If you use the shrine to cavern route and then rotate away, you're going to get a total of 14 chests. Or you can get 19 if you head to the Stone Tower as well, so that's a fantastic loot route regardless. And even better once you consider the rotations that you get when you land here. Finally guys, next up we're going to be getting into our seventh and final location for this video, which is actually a slightly more W key-ish spot, and it's absolutely slept on. And this spot is called Fridgerberg. This location is a bit above Anvil Square and has some serious loot for such a seemingly small location. At this drop, you're going to want to start by landing at this tiny cabin between the glaciers. Here you'll find a chest and potentially an oathbound chest as well. Then head to the closest building where you're going to find another chest and an oathbound chest. Then to the east building where you'll find two more chests and another oathbound chest. After that, you can circle back west for another chest at the shack. And then finally, south of this shack, you're going to find one more house with two chests to finish up this loot route. I know that sounded like quite a bit, but it's actually a really simple route. Once you've looted all of this, you can choose to either continue looting around since there's good loot in pretty much every direction, or you can head straight into Anvil Square to clean up whoever's fighting there and secure their loot. However you decide to approach it, this tiny drop spot is an absolute powerhouse with a total of 7 chests and 3 oathbound chests, which should have you pretty stacked on loot especially for such a short route and for a location so close to the middle of the map. So if you want a W key but you find yourself dying off spawn pretty often, Fridgerberg might do the trick for you. But with all that said guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's video on the best solo drop spots in Fortnite Chapter 4. Overall, we covered 7 different drop spots with varying levels of loot, locations on the map, and other factors that make them all unique. What I'd recommend you do is try out a bunch of different spots from this video, that way you can get some good variety in, and then simply select your favorites from there. If you found this video helpful, then be sure to drop a like on it, and consider subscribing as well if you're new to the channel and you want to see more Fortnite tips and tricks content just like this in the future. And if you want to show some extra support, then consider using code TECHO in the item shop as well. It's 100% free for you, it only takes a few seconds to type in, and it seriously does help me out a bunch. As always, a big thank you to everyone who uses it. With all that said though, thank you all for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.